I'm going to show you how to solve the Rubik's Cube, or at least the method I use to solve the Rubik's Cube. Uh, I hope it's fairly straightforward and you should be able to follow along with me if you have a cube yourself. One thing to be aware of with the Rubik's Cube is that the centres don't change in relation to one another. So when I have white on top, green facing me, I always have a red centre tile on my right hand side, an orange on my left hand side, blue on the back face and yellow underneath. So it doesn't matter what sort of moves I do. Um, if I get green face facing me, white uh, middle tile on top, I'll have red on my right hand side, orange on my left hand side, blue behind and yellow underneath. What that means is that these dictate the colour of the face. So this will be a white face, this will be a green face, which means there's a white and green tile needs to go there. A white, green and red tile has to go there, and so forth. What it also means is those six tiles are already solved for you. So you don't have to do anything with them. The way I'm going to solve this is by doing a cross on the top face. Then I'm going to put the corners into place. Then I'm going to do the middle row. Then I'll do the corners on the bottom row. Then I'll do the bottom face, making it yellow. And then finally I'll be left with these uh, bottom edges and I'll sort those out. So. Um, when I'm doing the first two rows, I'm going to use the bottom row as a sort of workspace. So I'll move things down to the bottom row um, prior to moving them into place. Uh, where I need to, or if I have to. So, uh, first one I notice is that I've got a red and white here, which needs to move into this space. And the easiest way of doing that is just doing that. Now that I've got this face, um, that piece in place. I won't move it unless I absolutely have to and then I'll move it back into the correct orientation when I, uh, as soon as I can. So next one I'm going to look at is blue and white which is down here. I get it under the bottom row by doing that. You note that I've undone the work I've already done. I'll turn it towards the blue face, move this back up so it's back in place. Now I've got this blue and white down at the bottom and I can move it up to the top face. Of course I can turn it down like this so that I've got the white and green so the white side is up rather than the green side. It makes it slightly more complicated because I then have to move it off to one side, move the centre down, move it into place, move it back up. So I've got three of them done now. Fourth one is up here. Again I can Move it down to the bottom face. Move it out of harm's way because I'm going to move this centre down. Move it back into place. Move the centre back up. And now I've got that cross. So what happens I've got one of the corner ones as well. I'm looking on the bottom row now for any that have a white face facing upwards. Such as this one, blue and orange. This means, basically in my methodology, to move the blue face down towards the orange. Blue face down towards the orange. I'm just making sure that I'm not disturbing the tile I want to move into place. And I move it round, move it back up. So now I've got that other corner done. Looking for any others. No, I've got uh, this one facing down. I can get it facing up by moving this face down giving it a twist, so I'm moving it out of harm's way. Move that back into place so I don't disturb anything. That is the red and the green, so red down towards the green. Red down towards the green. Turn it around so it's in place. Turn that back up. I've got this one as well. Move it down, out of harm's way, move that back up. That is red towards the blue, red towards the blue. Of course, if I turn that, I'm 
uh, moving that out of the way. So I've got to move that out of harm's way, turn that down, and turn that back round and up. So now I've got the top row done. I'm going to move on to the second row. And I'm looking at the bottom row for any that don't belong there, any that haven't got yellow on them. There's one there, orange and green. Orange is up, so I place it opposite the green. And much as the same as I was doing the top row, uh, green towards orange. Now I give it a twist to move this into the corner of the, uh, the square that I've moved, also moving the orange and the green round to the orange side. Move these up out of harm's way, at the same time as moving this corner against the edge piece. Then much the same way as I've been solving the corners, it's orange towards green, except that these two are on that orange face, so I have to move them to safety. Orange towards green, turn that into position, turn it up. Look for any others that don't belong, here's green and red, uh, green is up, place it opposite the red, Green, uh, red towards green, give it a twist round, move the red and green to the green face, move these back up into safety, at the same time moving this corner up against the edge square. So we've got these two together, then it's uh, as if I was putting in the corner square, green towards red, I've uh, got to move it out of harm's way, down green towards red, give it a twist, turn it back up, and we've got that one in place. Looking for any more that don't belong, there's blue and red, put the opposite the red face, again twist the red towards blue, give it a turn round to move this corner square into the this corner, and at the same time move the blue and red into this position. Turn these up so that they're protecting the cross, and we've got these two together again. Blue towards red, again moving the blue towards the red, I've got to move these into a safe position first. Turn it down, give it a twist, move it back up and we're almost there. Now you'll notice here I've got the no other ones in the bottom that have no uh, yellow on them. This one's in the correct place but rotated around the wrong way. So I'm just going to do the move exactly the same as I've done before. Um, which will put one of these squares into this position and move this down to the bottom row. So in actual fact it's going to put this orange and yellow square into this position. Um, just because it's opposite the orange face which I turned down towards the blue. Of course I could do it the other way. Turn it this way. I'll put a different one in. Move it safe. Move it in. Turn it back up. I got the orange and blue down. Place it opposite the blue face, blue towards orange, twist, putting it into the corner, moving the blue and orange onto the orange face, give it a turn to join these two together and protect the other squares. Move these round to safety, I'll move it twice for no particular reason, just so I'm not always doing the same move, and it is orange towards blue. And we'll it round and up. So there we are, that's the first two rows done. Now I want to check the corners on the bottom row. There's blue and orange in place, but that square's wrong. Green and red is in place, but that square's wrong. So these two need to swap places, they're diagonally opposite. But the move I do to swap these is a strange move, but um, if you follow it very carefully, you, you'll see how it works. It actually does the swap on the last move. So move this down. This is where I've got a wrong square and a correct square under each, underneath each other. Um, and I'd do this if these two squares needed to be swapped, and this one and this one were correct. So it's down like this. Move it to the side, move this back up to protect the squares, move that up to protect these squares, uh, give it a twist, 
my I would stop there if it was just two that are together that I wanted to swap, but as they're diagonally opposite, I'll give it a second twist. Now I just reverse the move, turn this down, turn that down, turn this round to put it back in place, turn it up. And if I then rotate this round, you'll see that I've got blue and orange there, red and blue there, red and green there, and green and orange there. Now, there are two moves I use to get across, or at least fill in um, the, yeah, basically, fill in two of the four um, bottom edges, make them yellow. Uh, if I had a, a line of yellow here, I would always use this move. And that gives me two yellows. And if it was a line across, it would break the, the line. The other move that I use doesn't actually um, break the line. It requires uh, two that need to be swapped or made yellow um, down at the bottom here, the bottom and the left. There's two moves down here. There we are. Now I need to uh, make this all yellow. And I, depending on the pattern, I always use the same move, but um, how I do it sort of depends on what I see in the bottom face. So, obviously didn't do very much. Just repeat the move. Give me this. When I see this particular pattern, I do it, the move where I've got the two and the yellow on this side. You see this one is two, but the yellow is down at the bottom. So I do the pattern to this, then two, back one. And that gives me a cross with uh, yellow in the corner. That's what I'm looking for. And how I do the move again depends on what pattern I see, so I'm looking for the two with the one on the side, and I do it this way. And that gives me the yellow face. Let's see, do I have any... I don't have any um, solid faces. So. The move that I use to complete these and move these round um, is a variation on the first one to do the corners on the bottom that I showed you, which is put it down, give it a twist once, put it back up, give it a second twist, put it down, and give it another twist. That would be what I would do to swap the corners, or fill in the yellow in the bottom, give it a second twist because I'm trying to do the edges. Turn it round. Now I should have one of these complete. Yes, a blue face. Just turn it round so I see it. Now I'm looking at the colour. Holding it in my left hand, the solid face. I'm looking at the colour of the bottom square here. That's red. Does it match this? No, it doesn't. So I have to swap sides. So these two match. So I move it down. I'm doing exactly the same move that I did before, but I'm doing it in a different direction simply because of the pattern that I saw. And there we are. That's it solved. Now I'll shuffle this up and do it again. Okay, so I'm looking at the green and white here. The easiest thing to do is turn it down so the white's at the bottom, turn it around to the green face, turn it up, and that's the green white in place. There's an orange there, which I'll turn around to the orange side, and turn it up. So I've now got the 
orange and white in place. There is the red and white. I could turn that up there to align the red squares and turn that up like that. There's the white and blue. Turn it down, give it a twist, turn that back up so it's safe. Now you'll see I've got the, the white and blue on the blue face, the blue touching, and bring that up. Now, looking for any with the white square upwards, and I've got two at the moment. So red and blue, red down towards the blue, red down towards the blue, turn that round, turn it up. So we've got that corner in place. Orange down towards the blue, orange down towards the blue, turn that round. That's up. That's that corner soft. Now this one's in the wrong place. So now I've got that down to the bottom face, the red towards the green. I'm going to move it out of harm's way, red towards the green. Move it in. Orange towards the green. Move it out of harm's way. Orange down towards the green. Move that back into place. Got the bottom, oh, the, sorry, the top row done. Looking for any that don't have yellow on it. So we've got red and green. Put it opposite the green. And it's green towards red. Give it a twist round, bringing that round to the red face. Bring those two back up. At the same time, bringing these two in a line. Move it into safety because I need to move the red down towards the green. Twist it round so it's into position, bring it back up. Any others? There's uh, blue and orange. Turn it opposite the orange. So blue down towards orange, twist it round. Nope, sorry, I'm doing it the wrong way around. Orange down towards blue, twist it the right way around. Bring those two in alignment. Move them into safe position so that I can bring the blue down towards the orange and move them up. Again, I've got a square reversed, so when I do the move as if I was putting a random square in, which I am, which moves the There we go. The orange towards the green, opposite the green. Green down towards the orange, give it a twist, turn it around. Safety, back up. Uh, red towards the blue, or red opposite the blue. Blue towards the red, twist it around. Move those back up, move it to safety, move that down. And there we've got the middle row done. Green and orange. Uh, yeah, they're all correct. But I have the line across. And if I do the move that I showed you, it didn't break the line. But it does fill in corners. You'll see I've still got the line there. So the move I've got to do look, that was just one twist. When I do the orientation of the non squares at the bottom, I will do two twists. So there we are, we've got that broken, the line broken. Now with these two, one down and one uh, on my left hand side. Of course, if I had one down and one on the right hand side, I would do it in the reverse direction. So. Now I got this again, depending on the pattern. Um, we do the move, going for two with one on the side, there's two with one on the side. A square cross. Do I have a? I do have a sort of face. So. Holding it on my left hand side, orange. Nope, it's not orange on that side. So, so blue, blue, yep. Give it a 
twist two there we are solved again <laughs>